Hey guys, it's Jean-Claude, excited to be back with Dark Tidings today. Today's deck is going to go to patron Andrew Brandsma, so wish him luck in the comments down below. There's some sort of, here we go, tab here, found out we could do the house reveal. Thank you to whoever left the comment. Should have remembered the name. Let's see here. Okay, so coming into it from the side. Oh, is it? Oh, we gotta do it this way, because they're upside down in there. First house is Sorion. Second house, Logos. Get the focus a little bit better. There we go. And the third house is Sanctum. He who is known as Olden Spiral. And a good looking Archon here, Gray, by the way. You can tell this is maybe more of a noble or high class Archon. Good luck to you, Andrew. Okay, we are going to start off with the High Tide, Low Tide card, and somehow my focus is still a little funny. Try this again. Okay, so we'll drop that down, and we are going to be starting off with Sorions. It's Venator Altum, 7 power, 2 armor. After its stealth damage, if the tide is low, exalt Venator Altum. Interesting card, makes your opponent want to have to get the chain so they can get to the High Tide. Okay, a second one of those. Big creature, though. So I like what it's doing there. Reach advantage, amber and heavy play it. If the tide is high, a friendly creature captures three amber. Otherwise, raise the tide. Okay, that's a pretty good card. Like seeing tide effects. Even though we don't really know what sort of effects we are going to have that helps with that, it's good to see free ones in here. Cornison Octavia, five power, one armor. Action, capture two amber. Siren Horn, it's an upgrade. Amber, if you play it, this creature gains before the fight. Move one amber from this creature to the creature it fights. Senator Quintina, five power. After a creature reaps, exalt it. Come on, let's see some new cards. Okay, here we go. Soriarium. <laughs> what? Hold on. Soriarium? There we go. Amber on every plate. It's an artifact. Each creature with the lowest power cannot reap. That is a very, very Sorion card. Die, no, you didn't. Amber on every plate. Destroy an enemy creature with amber on it. <laughs> That's a great name. Berry Riches. If the tide is high, move one amber from each creature to its controller's pool. Otherwise, raise the tide. Whoa, that is a pretty cool effect. I am digging that. Especially with some of these cards, like the ones where if it took damage and the tide was low, it gets exalted. I don't know. That can be pretty fun. It'll be interesting to see how Sorion is as a whole as a house. Bestiari, you're so? Five power, one armor, play, reap. You may unstun a creature. That is a very, very weird effect. Almost too specific. Well, then again, I guess the last set we did have a few creatures that came into play stunned inside of Sorion, so maybe that's a common theme inside of this set as well. Grim Locust Ducks, 11 power, 2 armor, taunt, play, exalt it twice. It's going to go really well with that. What was it called? Bury the Tide? Something like that. Uh, no, not this one. Bury Riches. Okay, so that goes pretty well with that. This is a big body. Hopefully we have some creatures we want to protect in the other houses. Didn't really see anything inside of here, but a very cool card. We had this in the last set. Very strong. <laughs> okay, you have a second one of those in here. And now we are on to Sanctum. Marshall Ewer, four power, two armor, play fight, raise the tide. Lots of effects raising the tide already. It's at least three. Haven't really seen any cards looking for tide effects though, other than getting rid of the negative on the first Sorion creature we had seen. Larry of the Lake, three power. While the tide is high, each friendly creature gets plus two armor. Okay, now that's a very good reason to have the high tide. Heal or harm, choose one, fully heal a creature and gain an amber, or ready and fight with a friendly creature. That's a pretty cool effect. And that could be really Really big with these 11 power Sorion creatures we have. Hammer Graham, deal three damage to a creature and stun it. Another one of those. Grand Melee, destroy each creature that does not share a house with at least one of its neighbors. Huh, that's a very odd card. It is easy for your opponent to kind of prepare for this, but then again, since you are the one that gets to choose when you're going to play this, you can on a Sanctum term, maybe fight, mess up their board a little bit, then play the Grand Melee, really screwing with them. Oh, okay, a second Grand Melee. Bulwark, 4 power, 1 armor, assault 2, each of its neighbors gains assault 2. Badge Magus, 4 power, deploy, so it can go anywhere in your battle line. Fight, ready and fight with each of Bag Magus's neighbors, one at a time, wait a minute. Okay, okay, for a second I was going to say that's better than Grey Rider, but it doesn't have the play effect. Very interesting, so whenever you fight with this you can get two additional fights, and if your opponent's board is clear, Guess what? Those can become reaps. This is a pretty cool effect. I'm liking that, especially if we can give it some armor thanks to that one of the lake card. Honor or glory, deal three damage to each flank creature or deal three damage to each creature not on a flank. We saw it in the last deck, very strong. Seraphic armor, it's an upgrade. Amber, have you play it? This creature gets plus one armor and play, fully heal this creature. Two effects already in this deck, fully healing creatures, really works out with those huge Sorion creatures. Lightsmith Clariel, 5 power, 2 armor. Before the fight, you may switch its power and armor for the remainder of the turn. So if your opponent has a creature with only 2 health left, you can essentially switch this over, prevent 5 of the damage, 
then kill that creature, but if it already has damage on it, that would be a problem. Be very careful with this card. And that's a rare, okay, well, rares in Keyforge don't necessarily tell you the power level of it. It's all just about the likelihood it can appear in a deck. Okay, now we're on to Logos. It's Talmage Steelheart, three power. Play, give it a plus one power counter for each card you have played this turn, including this one. So it's always at least going to be a four power creature. Okay, and you have a second one of those. Science, we saw this in the last deck for the remainder of the turn. After you play another action card, gain an amber. Another science, do those always come in duplicates? Pi Sweven, two power, reap if the tide is high, draw three cards, saw in the last deck, I was pretty impressed with it. Especially with the taunts we have in this deck, wait a minute, we got two huge taunts? So if our opponent doesn't have an action to remove this, ooh, this could get real dirty. Hydro Cataloger, it's an artifact, and whenever you play it. After a player raises the tide, they archive the top card of their deck. That could be really good. We had some reusable raise the tide effects, had a little bit inside of Sorion as well. Hopefully we, oh, whoa, there's a second one. It's kind of a shame it does it for both players, but we could really abuse this. this is this a rare? No, it's a common. What an interesting card, especially since you can get them in multiples. Final analysis, also in the last deck, destroy each creature. Each player draws a card for each creature they control that was destroyed this way. Fun card. Armadrone, one power, three armor, fight, steel, and amber. Mind bullets deal one damage to each creature for each card you have played this turn, including this one. I really like this effect. I guess it's going to be a common theme inside of this set. At least you've seen in Logos, this kind of scaling power where if you play a whole bunch of Logos cards, you can all of a sudden have a much bigger effect. And then honestly, you could play this early because you don't want to maybe do four damage, even though let's say you have four Logos cards in your hand. Maybe you want to do it second to do two damage to each creature. I like the versatility of a card like this. Data Forge. Amber, whenever you play it, you may forge a key at plus 10 current cost to reduce by one for each card in your hand. Oh, wait a minute. Okay, we'll talk about this later. And the final card of the deck, Knowledge is Power, made a return. Choose one, archive a card, or gain one Amber for each card in your archives. Oh boy, that can do a lot of work with the two Hydro Catalogers in here. Very interesting. And that's actually the note I wanted to say about the Data Forge here. Man, if we can get both those down early, raise the tide a couple times throughout the game, that could be maybe four or six cards. We're definitely going to get a free key off that Data Forge, and Knowledge of the Power is going to really help make sure we have the Amber to do that. That is a really strong finish here for Logos. All right, let's see what sort of Amber we have inside of this deck now. Hmm, I guess we'll pull the Sciences up and just call them one. Not too much inside a Sanctum. Oh, wow, is there no Amber in Sanctum? Wait a minute. Okay, well, as long as it has a lot of creatures, this won't be too big of a problem. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Ooh, eleven seems light, and also, hold on, one of these cards... Uh, where was it? Is it this top one? No, wasn't there something that made it where the creatures that were exalted could get amber? Let's go look for that. So it's going to be more than 11. Yeah, right here, I expect the tide to be in our favor, so this can get some amber back into our pool. Not sure we'll count it as. I think two might be a safe bet, so we'll say 13 amber for this deck. Now for amber control, see this could capture. This gets rid of amber that we took from them, putting it back onto their creatures. Hmm, lowest power creature cannot reap. I feel like overall this deck had some pretty big creatures other than the two power. Oh, we have a one power here as well, but this is a fighter. The reap doesn't affect that. Gotta make sure these two don't combine together because I want to definitely reap and get those three cards. That could be big. Okay, so let's look at the amber control. Let's see here. It's kind of skipping ahead. I got excited trying to make sure we weren't going to have a problem with that. I guess Sanctum was lacking a lot of capture like we saw in the last deck we opened. Hmm. Oh boy, wait a minute. What am I seeing here? Oh, oh no, oh no. I'm hoping we miss something and we'll find it later, but one, two, three, four? And that's honestly questionable? Oh my gosh, is that reality? Oh my, so we had like 13-ish amber, 4 amber control. What sort of creatures do we have here? We're going to have to hope we got a lot of creatures in here. That way, you can just plop them down on one turn and then use them to control the board. 
uh, slash be your reapers. You're going to need these things to get you a lot of amber over a course of the game. We only had one big board wipe. It was that uh, Logos card again. Surprising me, Logos somehow has the best board wipe that I've seen so far, although this is only the second deck from this set. So creatures, one, five, ten, fifteen, sixteen. What is going on here? Man, okay, that's kind of weird. All right, so the deck seems a little bit weak overall, but you know what? It has something really powerful going for it, and that's a combo. We do have the Pi Sweven here. This could help because we need a lot of cards simply because we are going to have to get one of our keys from... Let's pull them all up. See these cards here, and final analysis is going to be important. This allows us to destroy all the creatures, draw a bunch of cards. We need to have a big hand so we can data forge. The Hydro Cataloger is going to help with that as well, possibly Pi. This is going to have to be at least one of the keys. Hopefully we can get a big archives, and maybe get a key's worth of Amber off the Knowledge's Power as well. So right here, honestly, I'm viewing these two cards as getting us two keys. We had 11-ish Amber outside of there, plus creatures to reap to get the rest. And yeah, that is the only way this deck is really good gonna win we had at least some cards to help with board wipes we had like the logos card i think it was called mind bullets allowing us to do damage to each creature you got the honor of glory here grand melee to try to help out hammer gram so i guess we do have the tools to try and control the game up until that point but if we go up against like say a very very fast amber rush deck we're gonna have to hope that we hit those combo pieces real nice and early my suggestion for this deck is to always mulligan till you hit at least one hydro cataloger all right andrew i hope you like your deck here it's definitely an interesting one i hope everyone is out there having fun with dark tidings and as always thank you very much for watching my videos and i'll see you next time